This week on Hometown Ghost Stories. The city of Guadalajara has more haunted locations than most major cities in the entire country of Mexico. From orphanages to hospitals to haunted houses and cemeteries, it's no shock that this ancient city is considered one of Mexico's most paranormally active. This is Hometown Ghost Stories, a deadly fear of the dark. Hometown Ghost Stories contains serious and often distressing events and is not intended for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. 1882, Guadalajara, Mexico. The thick blanket of fog only added to the heavy feeling of abject despair that hung over the Belen Cemetery. It always felt that way after a funeral but the dismal setting exacerbated the feeling. Juan checked his pocket watch. The sun was setting behind the cloud-covered sky, changing the dismal gray to a deep shade of blue. The last funeral party of the day had departed and Juan was setting up to bury the body. The body was that of a five-year-old boy who died under strange circumstances. He was scared to death. The priest explained to Juan before leaving him to his somber duties. Apparently, the boy had a terrible fear of the dark, and when a sudden gust of wind blew out his bedroom light, he dropped dead from fear. Juan made the sign of the cross and began to bury the body. Juan had trouble sleeping that night. He was woken many times, covered in sweat, tormented by a recurring nightmare. He dreamt that he was alone in the cemetery, lost, wandering between the graves, and that every turn, he'd see the ghost of the boy he'd buried earlier that day, crying that he was afraid of the dark. After the third time waking from the nightmare, Juan decided rather than going back to sleep, to just start his day early. It was dawn, and another cloudy day it seemed. Juan made coffee and decided to go into work early to begin prepping for the day's funerals. He was tired, but he knew that once he got into his routine, he'd be just fine. Juan arrived at the cemetery just as the morning sun began to illuminate the dark clouds that hung gray in the dawn sky. Something didn't feel right. A disturbance in the atmosphere that Juan chalked up to his lack of sleep or perhaps his rattled nerves from the series of nightmares that plagued him the night before. He grabbed a metal rake from the shed and began walking the familiar route. It was when he reached the boy's grave from the previous day that he realized the uneasy feeling had nothing to do with his lack of sleep. He gasped and dropped the rake, which clanged to the ground, disturbing the morbid silence that had hung heavy in the cemetery air. Juan stared in disbelief at the boy's coffin that he had buried six feet in the earth just hours ago. It now sat atop the undisturbed ground of the gravesite. I'm Dave Wilkins, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories, Guadalajara, Mexico. Initially founded in 1531 by the Spanish, the city of Guadalajara was relocated several times because of the resistance of the Cuyotecos and the other indigenous tribes. The city was eventually made the state capital in 1549. The area now known as Guadalajara, although colonized in the 16th century, has a much deeper, vast history. Dating as far back as the 10th century, indigenous tribes inhabited the area and hunted game in the Central Valley. When the Spanish invaded in the 16th century, they forced the local tribes people to assimilate to their culture and religion. It's believed the Cuyoteco tribe became extinct due to cultural suppression from the Spanish. Today, the city of Guadalajara is well known for tequila and mariachis and is considered a mecca for Mexican culture. It's also known to be one of the most haunted cities in the country due to the legends of many of its infamous locations. 
Hospicio Cabanas. One of the oldest and largest hospital complexes in the Americas exists in the colonial heart of Guadalajara. Built in the 19th century to provide care and shelter for the disadvantaged, this remarkable complex, designed by architect Manuel Tolsa, actually has quite a dark history. The hospice's founder, Bishop Cabanas, founded Hospicio Cabanas in 1801 to serve not only as the hospital, but also as a church, orphanage, and workhouse for the poor inhabitants of the city. As the war for Mexican independence raged in the 1810s, the building became the headquarters for the city's colonial army. When the Spanish were finally kicked out in 1821, Hospicio Cabanas returned to its original religious and charitable functions for over a century. At this point, it was mainly used as an orphanage, and many of the children housed there were indigenous children forced to convert to Catholicism. According to many historians, the Hospicio was home to Mexico's first clock, which sat in a tower at the front of the building. At first, the clock worked fine, but then it started breaking and would have to be repaired. This occurrence began happening more and more, but nobody thought much into it. Then, the nuns began noticing a disconcerting pattern. Every time the clock broke, the time that the clock was stuck at would coincide with the exact time that a child in the orphanage was discovered dead. That led to rumors that the devil himself was lurking around the hospicio, tormenting sick and orphaned children, and eventually killing them, attempting to steal their souls. The nuns who worked at the hospital were so disturbed by these events that they had the clock removed. In the 1930s, the state government of Jalisco commissioned artist José Clemente Orozco to paint a series of murals in the building's interior. Between 1937 and 1939, Orozco painted over 57 frescoes for the walls and vaulted dome of Hospicio Cabanas. The murals portray hallucinatory and allegorical scenes from Mexico's history and dark foreboding images of the possible future of humanity. It has since been believed that the halls of this old museum are still haunted by the tormented souls of the children who once called this place their home. The House of the Black Clover Known by locals as La Casa de Trebol Negro, the affluent home was built by Lord Duncan Cameron, a lower member of British nobility. Lord Duncan had painted a black clover in each room as a reminder of his family history. After many years living in the home, Lord Duncan passed the house down to his son George and his wife Josefina Rivera, who came from a wealthy family of her own. George and Josefina raised several children in the house. One legend says that one of George and Josefina's daughters, when she was a teenager, hanged herself in the bedroom. This led to turmoil in the household, eventually resulting in Josefina taking the remainder of the children and leaving George to live out the rest of his life in the lonely mansion. George slowly slipped into depression, and the house eventually fell into disrepair. George died in the house, and the building was sold to a new owner. Strangely enough, soon after purchasing the house, the new owner killed himself after murdering his wife and daughter. The house is believed to be haunted by the ghosts of those who lived and died there. Neighbors report hearing screams coming from the empty house at all hours of the night and early morning. Shadows can be seen walking by the windows when nobody is home, and the ghost of a woman in white has been seen lurking around the property at night. Visitors to the house claim to have seen blood oozing from the walls and report the sound of disembodied footsteps following them around. There's a legend that surrounds a peculiar fountain that sits on the property. The fountain is a statue adorned by four children. One of the children is holding a skull that is believed to be the petrified skull from one of the children who died in the house, but of course that part is just a legend. Belen Cemetery Panteón de Belen is an historic cemetery located in Guadalajara. It opened in 1848 and was formally closed for burials in 1896, though it still remains open to the public. When the cemetery was designed, it was divided, like many at the time, into two sections, a common area and a section for the wealthy. It was originally called the Santa Paula Cemetery and was built to help support the demand for grave sites during Guadalajara's many epidemics of the 19th century. 
The Belén Cemetery has since been deemed to be one of the most haunted locations in all of Mexico. According to legend, one of the ghosts who haunts the cemetery is the ghost known as the Pirate. During the mid-19th century, a young ambitious sailor was part of a crew of dejected merchants who turned to piracy. For years, they traversed the Pacific Ocean and plundered ships laden with riches from the Orient. After witnessing so many deaths of his brothers and crewmates, he called it quits in his midlife. He wanted to settle with his riches in Guadalajara, where he had his one and only son, who was unaware of how his father made his fortune. A fortune that is buried and undiscovered somewhere in Guadalajara. One day, the pirate died unexpectedly of natural causes. And since he never had a chance to explain to his son what he was, he died without disclosing the location of his fortune. He was buried in Pantheon de Belen, and according to legend, if a devout person visits the pirate's grave at midnight and prays the rosary for the man's tormented soul, the ghost of the pirate will reveal the exact location of the treasure. People have been trying for decades, but the location of the treasure remains a mystery. Another legendary haunting in the Belen Cemetery is that of Victoria Hurtado, a woman who was born in 1833 and amassed a large fortune during her life. She also suffered from catalepsy, a medical condition characterized by a trance or seizure with a loss of sensation and consciousness accompanied by rigidity of the body. People suffering from a cataleptic seizure could sometimes be mistaken for dead, and that's just what her three sons did. Octaviano, Alejandro, and Javier waited for their mother to have one of her seizures before they took the opportunity to claim she was dead and have her buried, except their mistake wasn't so innocent. In fact, it wasn't a mistake at all. They plotted to bury her alive so they could inherit her large fortune. However, to their shock, they learned she hadn't written them in her will. She left their would-be inheritance to charity, leaving them empty-handed. The macabre discovery that Victoriana was buried alive was made by the night watchman at the Belen Cemetery. He heard her panicked wails coming from her tomb, but by the time he was able to get it open, she had already died from a heart attack. Her body laid there with a look of terror frozen on her face and her hands bloody from clawing at the inside of her tomb in attempt to dig herself out. Now her disembodied wails can be heard echoing through the cemetery at night and bloody handprints have been spotted around her tomb briefly before disappearing. Perhaps the most famous haunting of the Belen Cemetery is that of 10-year-old Nino Nachito, a young boy who was buried there in 1882. Ignacio Torres Altamirano, nicknamed Nachito by his parents and grandparents, had an unnatural fear of the dark. His phobia was so profound that the only way he could sleep was if he had two torches lit outside his bedroom window, which had to be left open. One night, on the night of May 24th, 1882, Nachito's parents went out to a party after tucking him in and ensuring that his torches were lit. While they were gone, a storm hit unexpectedly. A sudden gust of wind blew the torches out, causing Nino to panic. The combination of the howling gale and the sudden shock of being hurled into complete darkness was enough to send the boy into a state of shock that would lead to his subsequent death. As soon as the storm had hit, Nino's parents knew they had to get home quickly. They did just that, but were too late. When Nino's mother entered his room, she knew right away something was wrong. The air was cold. The soundless darkness of the room was such an unnatural occurrence that she screamed before she even discovered the horror that awaited her, shrouded in the blackness of the night. Nachita was pronounced dead on the scene. Later, it was determined that he had died of a heart attack that night because of his intense pathological fear of the dark. Rumors began to spread that the young boy's heart had exploded inside of his chest, and Nachito's horrible death was the result of a curse or was the work of demons. Nino was buried at the Belen Cemetery, but the following morning, the boy's coffin was found disinterred and lying on the undisturbed ground at the foot of his gravestone. The parents and locals alike were alarmed, and the cemetery caretaker reburied the boy's coffin. However, the next morning, the same thing happened, and it continued to happen for the next nine days. 
Nachito's family determined that the boy's restless soul continued to be tormented by his fear of the dark, even in the afterlife, and refused to remain in the ground, away from the light. Their solution was to build a stone coffin standing on four short pillars above the ground, so Nachito's tomb could always see sunlight. To this day, visitors to the cemetery claim to see the ghost of Nino Nachito or hear his disembodied voice throughout the cemetery. Others have claimed to see mysterious balloons floating a few feet above the ground, as if a small child were carrying them. Nachito's strange grave has become an attraction, and people leave gifts for the boy and ask him favors in return. His grave is easy to locate, since it's often surrounded with toys. The history of this city speaks for itself, and the people who live there, with their experiences, are testimony to the authenticity of its lore. From haunted houses, to demons and clock towers, to cemeteries infested with ghosts, these have been just a few of the locations that give the city of Guadalajara its reputation of being one of Mexico's most haunted. Oh my God, we're back. We're what here. Up? What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Hometown Ghost Stories, episode number 126. We're talking about Guadalajara, Mexico. Back in Mexico for another episode. I'm Jesse Wilkins. I'm joined by Rob Coakley. Hello there, Rob. I hope all of our listeners have gotten their rest over the last two weeks with just some pre-recorded stuff because I am declaring it. It is officially spooky season and we are hitting the ground running. Dave hit it with this crazy episode in mexico and it's going to be um full force from here on out absolutely so uh i'm jesse wilkins that's rob coakley also joined by dave wilkins hello dave hello i've been uh dying to get back to mexico to do another episode last time we covered mexico city and i had a really good time researching it so this is uh pretty close to mexico city a little bit west and uh, also lots of spooky history Yes. This one uh, certainly rivals Mexico City with all the hauntings in this city. The, these ones, you, you get everything. I, I, loved, I love these stories. I'm excited to hop into it. Uh, excited to announce a few things. First of all, thanks to everyone who's hanging out in live chat. We had a ton of donations while that uh, video was playing for you guys. Uh, Potato came in and gifted some memberships. Chris came in, gifted some. Eric S. donated $4.99 in Super Chat. Another five gifted from, uh, from Eric. Actually, like Eric gifted like... 11 or something like that. I don't know. A lot of gifted uh, tests and came in and dropped 50 YouTube memberships. Always, always just absolutely rocking the house there. Test with those gifteds. And then Zeta came in with five formerly known as stitch kitten. If you guys are wondering who that is, but going through the little, little rebrand there, some new logos. there, looking good there. Stitch excited to see what you have in store for your streams and everything. But uh, we have some exciting stuff. So Rob announced it. We officially have done this spooky season. I know we're thinking it's, you know, it's late June, almost July, but Every day spooky season here at Hometown Ghost Story. We make the rules here. We do. As we we all say. We do, we do say that frequently. So we have, we have some exciting events coming up. Rob, I'll let you hop into that. Sure. Dave, do you want to tell them about what we're doing at, in Weymouth first? And then I'll tell about the other thing. Yeah. So October 18th in Weymouth, Massachusetts, we are going to be doing a live episode, which is going to be technically our first live episode because... We've never, I mean, live in person, right? All of our episodes are live, <laughs> but this will be like live episode in person at an actual location. Uh, we have a, an opener, another podcast that's kind of, that's going to be coming. There's going to be horror trivia. It's going to be a fun time. It's at the Barrel House Z Brewery in Weymouth, Massachusetts. It's a ticketed event. Tickets are 25 bucks. They are on sale now. We'll post links in all of our social medias and uh, we would love it if you guys all came out to see us. Yeah, like, you. like Dave said, we are going to be there. We're going to be doing a live show. We have another podcast, as he mentioned, but we're also going to have vendors there as well. It's at a brewery. You can drink. You can hang. We're going to have a ton of fun. There'll be food. Event. There'll be food. Um, so it's going to be a hell of an event. 
But if you're holding out a little bit and you can't come that week, let me tell you what we're going to be doing the week after on the 25th and the 26th of October. A lot of people have asked us, um, when can we investigate with you guys? We want to go on an investigation with you. Well, this is the first year you're going to have that opportunity. We are going to be doing a weekend long investigation. There's going to be more than just investigations. There's going to be ghost tours. We're going to be doing it on Block Island. And we will release all those details on Discord as they become a little bit more prominent. But it's going to be with us and uh, Block Island Ghost Tours. So you can contact them as well. But that's the 25th, the 26th of October doing investigations and in, I think two different locations, ghost tours on the island. There's breakfast. There's places to stay. So uh, stay tuned for the exact details on that. But we are going to be on Block Island doing investigations with all of you that decide to come. Yeah. And if you're wondering what Block Island is, if you haven't heard about it, we did cover it in a previous episode. One of our earlier episodes went out there, uh, did the ghost tours out there and there's lighthouses. The whole island is haunted. It is such a an awesome place and it is if you didn't gather in the title it is an island so you do have to take a ferry out there it's a little bit to uh to make that happen but they will work out hotel rates and stuff like that and drop more info as we continue to gather more information but i'm super excited about that so yeah live investigation stuff that is uh that is top top notch top notch meetup stuff so should be a fun one that is the uh spooky season announcements that we have obviously there will be Tons of content coming out as we get closer to the uh, wonderful month of October, but lots of fun stuff coming up. But I want to thank you all for, uh, again, this was a little bit of a break for us, a sort of break. You know, you still got episodes, but those were pre-recorded episodes. It's good to be live again, be hanging out with all you beautiful folks in live chat. I was once again being world traveler, Jesse. And uh, for those of you that did happen to catch it, I didn't really announce it, which is kind of not great, but I I was in Greece and I did uh, do a little live stream from, what was called the Island of the Dead, which Ooh. was cool. So we had to rent a boat to go to it. I could have taken a ferry situation there, but that's not as fun as just renting a boat. So we rented a boat. Could have swam. swam there. No, that's the funny part is I had to. <laughs> so oh. the thing is, if you rent a boat, they don't let you pull up to the dock. <laughs> so <laughs> no way. We had, we had to just go kind of close and I jumped into the water with my phone just above my head and swam over to the island like a psychopath. I'm like, I'm not oh, just going to not go to the island. So it's, then I climbed. It's a decorative dock. They're just like, we have this, but you can't use it. No, it's a dock. But honestly, if you saw how many like ferries and everything were pulling in there, you don't want to pull in with your s- stupid boat and get squished by these giant vessels. So yeah, I made the sacrifice. I swam over to the island and, uh, and did that. And I get back and I'm, I'm just waiting for, cause I, I went out there with uh, the family. So the wife and kids, and then uh, Andrew, Captain McSlugs was out there as well. And uh, he was obviously being the captain of the boat. So I get out there and, and I see the boat pulling back in. I'm like, all right, perfect. And I just see my son in the water swimming up to the island. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> and uh, I guess some guys had a head flown off into the water and he like, he was nice enough to jump off into the water to go get this guy's hat for him. So of course, when I walked up to the dock, there's a standing ovation. I was like, yes, (laughs) it is me. No, they were clapping for my son who rescued someone's hat. That's funny. Anyways, we should jump into this episode. Before we do that, one more announcement. This episode is dedicated to the, to the two and only mom and pops Wilkins. So VIP patrons, they handle all of our stickers. So if you've ever received a sticker from Hometown Ghost Stories, that's courtesy of Wilkins Signs with my parents and uh, also VIP patrons. So this episode is dedicated VIP to them. patrons for a long time too. They've been mm-hmm. original and some of the, some of the original VIPs. So yes. thank you so much for always supporting the show. Hell yeah! All right, let's hop into some uh, some Guadalajara. Yeah. So I originally chose Guadalajara because I was reading this book about the Aztecs, and I was like, you know what, the Aztecs were some were some pretty ruthless, scary people. I think I want to do another episode that covers them and territory that they were in. So I started researching Guadalajara because it's relatively close to Mexico City and the Aztecs weren't there. (laughs) So I'm like, all right, whatever. The hauntings are cool, so I'll stick with it. And there are so many haunted locations in this city. I covered maybe a third of them, maybe not even. And I left out a lot. So I got some extra stuff that I didn't cover in the original different ghost stories, different legends from that area. And we can get right into it. So I want to start with Hospicio Cabanas because this location is. Of course. Yes. My, 
I got all right. So I'll, I'll offer one correction. My my Spanish I think is pretty good. I've got a couple compliments. It's Jalisco, the state, not Jalisco. I did the the hard yeah. J there. I can't I wait to have some yeah. jalapenos with you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, funny that it, it was all all through. I'm just like, damn, Dave's doing it again. Dave's got these pronunciations. And, <laughs> and chat was complimenting you. Some Spanish speakers in chat, they're like, yeah, he's doing great. And then just not anymore. No. <laughs> Jalisco. Sorry, you're, Jalisco. You're allowed to get one wrong. We, yeah. we, I got San Pedro wrong. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's we we do. Rob gets everything wrong. We're, we're, we're you know. I'm always accurate. Yeah. Rob's just pulling up in his Impaler with his great grammar, you know? <laughs> There's not something on the side content we have to record this week that I have no idea how to pronounce, and I'm just going to wing it. That's that's not going to happen. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, that's not bad. I don't speak Spanish, so I guess I can, I guess I get one, you know, Arriva Dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you did fine. It's all right. Anyway, so Hospicio Cabanes was built in 1701. And they expanded the building in 1796. And the architect really went all out with this building. It's a magnificent piece of architecture. If you saw the, uh, if you're watching the video on YouTube or on Spotify, you could see the images of this place. And it's magnificent. Even having been built that long ago, it still looks really good. So it spent a short time during the Mexican Independence War as an army headquarters. And then it went right back to being an orphanage after that. Now, in the 1800s, that's when they had that weird phenomenon where the kids were dying and it, they noticed that it coincided with the clock breaking. Every time the clock broke, the time that was on the clock would be would coincide with the time that they found one of the kids dead, which is terrifying to think about. So they, they automatically blamed it on the devil or demons or something like that, which is not too far off. I mean, I, I, I can understand where they would have drawn that conclusion because what are you supposed to think it's it seems like something completely supernatural to to have something like that i feel like there's too many kids that are dying to be able to make this connection like <laughs> you do yeah, in like, order do you to think, figure this out do you think the guy that was trying to keep the kids al- who's in charge of keeping the kids alive was like must be the clock <laughs> 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 i know right um but there's actually a, a possible explanation. So there was this nun named Ava, and she was one of the nuns who worked at this hospicio. And she was an insane person. So what she was doing was she was going around and she was poisoning the sick kids because she wanted them to go to heaven and heaven good. So if you kill the kids and send them to heaven, then that's a good thing. That was her. That was Jesse. You want to say something? You... No, I was just saying but you shouldn't do that. No, I think that you definitely probably shouldn't do that. I think that's not the best thing. Thank God you're back, Jesse. We're so. <laughs> <clears throat> Can you tell I haven't slept in 26 hours? Don't expect these jokes to get any better, folks. But yeah, so that's what she was doing. And they eventually caught on to what she was doing and put a stop to it, but not before she killed a number of kids and her. Her logic was pretty flawed, I would say. Whether you believe in God or not, you're wrong either way. <laughs> yeah, I would say this is not the way to go about making sure they go to heaven. It's, right. I think there are uh, better better pathways. To- yeah, it is, it is a good way to make sure you go to hell, though. So. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, God's up there like, Ava, I got it. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got it under control. Yeah, no, that is that is absolutely awful, but eerie with the whole clock stopping whenever it would happen. Yeah, very much so. And that who knows if that's coincidence or if there was something supernatural going on because they believed that it was a de- I mean, if it was a demon, it could have been a demon possessing her, right? It's that's not a- it's definitely not normal behavior, so you, you can't rule that out. Yeah, good point. <laughs> but so that happened. And then in the 1930s, the state government of Jalisco commissioned artist Jose Clemente Orozco to paint a series of murals in the building's interior. And these images are terrifying. This guy definitely had a style. I included some of the images in the opening video. And they are he, he has had such a dark style of painting. Like, I love it. I would hang all these paintings in my oh, they're house. They were super cool. Yeah, I, I kept pulling up the images and looking at different ones. I thought I was, I thought it was going to be one, you know, when you Google the, the picture of the place, you, you see one of them. So for audio listeners, if you haven't swing over to uh, YouTube or Spotify and, and watch the opening, 
because you want to see these images. It's actually a uh, beautiful artwork, but very dark. Definitely very dark. And there's a pretty scary ghost story tied to one of the images. And it goes as this. So there was a visitor to the museum, I think back in the 90s, and she was walking around looking at all the artwork because it was she found it disturbing because it was. And she was looking at one painting in particular. And the painting she was looking at, she described as a red painting with different shades of red. And the, the focus of the painting was a clock. And the clock had a man inside of it. And he was surrounded by children. But the children weren't looking at the man. They were looking at a mean looking nun who was off to the side, glaring at the kids. And she was like, that's a pretty disturbing image. Didn't really understand it. And that was when she got a funny feeling that someone was behind her. So she turned around and she sees a little boy walking into a dark room. And she thought that was weird. She followed him in, concerned that it might not be a horrible demon child, that it might be just a kid who was lost. So she follows him into the room. Now she, the room is completely dark and it's ice cold, which is not natural for Guadalajara. This is not an air conditioned building. At least I don't think. We could call and find out, I suppose. <laughs> no, 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 we don't do that anymore. We never have. No, no never done that. that. Never happened. <laughs> Please, let's do a paranormal investigation. Are you Allegedly. Right? <laughs> haunted place in Arizona. But she's in this completely dark room and she's not comfortable. So she turns around to leave. And as she turns around, the boy is standing there, blocking the doorway, reaching out towards her. And as he's got his arm out, his arm kind of just fades away and disappears so that there's no hand. And she's freaked out and runs right by him, back into the hallway, runs back down towards where she was standing at the painting. But the painting isn't there. It does not exist. Yeah, I was going to say that sounds like a really specific painting that connects to this ghost story. And oh, wow, that's that's a sight to behold if you think that you saw. That's our first appearing painting. Yeah. And I didn't, so I looked at the, yeah, I know, right? I looked into the artwork and I was looking through all the paintings and I didn't see anything like the one that she described. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist because it could exist. It could be there and she could have just got turned around and didn't, and was in a different spot and the painting was somewhere else. You know, museums are confusing. Right. I mean, I looked through, I looked through the paintings. I didn't see that one either, but not to say that it doesn't exist. If it does exist, we'll... We'll go edit this out, you know. <laughs> it would be very specific for that. Like, I feel like they would not put that one up in poor taste to begin with. Right. Mm, yeah. Right. Because of the the legend of the man in the clock. Right. That would be weird. But it wouldn't be. I mean, if that was one of the legends, I could see an artist maybe doing it. Because this guy's paintings were pretty specific. If you look at them, like the he had the the painting of the the man on the ceiling there the burning man on the ceiling that was pretty with all the figures around it that was pretty specific um pretty detailed so it sounds like it some, could be something that was his work mm. true but the hauntings in this place are pretty creepy with the uh the ghost children walking around possibility of a demonic force there they believed back when this place was functioning as an orphanage they believed that the devil was there so definitely a lot of dark energy in this location, for sure. Yeah, it's a creepy one, for sure. That it is. So the next location I covered was the House of the Black Clover. This is a pretty creepy haunted house story. Two different families lived there and experienced horrible things. It was built by Lord Duncan Cameron, and he was British nobility. And he had painted a black clover in the corner of each rooms, each room to remind him of his family history. So he ended up passing the house down to his son, George and George's wife. And they had a bunch of kids and tragically one of the daughters hanged herself in the house. So that obviously tore the family apart. The wife moved out with the rest of the kids and George was left to just kind of go insane in the house by himself. And that's what he did until he died. Now the weird part about this story was when the second guy bought the house and moved in. He went insane, murdered his family, and killed himself. So the theory behind this place is that there's something dark there that is kind of like an Amityville situation, right? You had the tragedy in the first, although maybe reverse, right? You had the, tra the, fa the family had the tragedy the first time around, and then the next family who moved in was affected by whatever's haunting the place. I would say this is objectively darker than Amityville. I mean, I understand the connection, but you have one family where, I mean, we, we know that 
things that happen in the house like this, where you have a suicide in the house, you have probably multiple deaths of the first family in the house that could obviously lead to a building being haunted as well as many other things. But then the second story is even darker in Amityville. You have an objectively horrifying murder, you know, multiple murders that happened inside that house. And then the second one is the controversial one where maybe something happened, maybe something didn't this right. one objectively two horrifying things happened to both these families. Right. Well, okay. with Amityville, George Lutz, he was he was losing his mind, and he wanted he wanted to kill his family, and then didn't end up doing it. So that could have gone the same way, but didn't. True. Yep. But I see the similarities for sure. Mm. Also, we we've heard of this in varying degrees across like different places. Where, for instance, I know somebody that rents out uh, a multifamily unit unit, and everyone that's moved into one specific unit in the building seems very normal as they move in and by the time they move out they're behaving strangely like they they have different like like they they're not the same people as when they moved in and it's only the one unit right so it's weird how that now it's not to this degree right there's no murders or anything happening but it, it's very interesting how certain places have a different effects on people when they they live there over time Paranormal. you see it all yeah you see it all the time with uh with own things sorry go ahead Dave. so i was just talking about paranormal portals comment he said george uh george's wife just grabs the kids yeah nope right out of there must have been a lovely marriage for better or worse right seriously but i mean you you hear about that all the time where uh the death of a child can definitely tear a family apart yeah understandably so yep um, I actually thought he was referring to George Lutz. That's why I was reading the comments, but still, still relevant. But the the hauntings that surround this house now are some of the more terrifying that you could imagine, right? So you, neighbors report hear, hearing screams coming from the empty house all hours of the night. That sounds like a, you know, that sounds like, yeah, the disembodied screams coming from the house. This is a vacant house and you hear screaming coming from an empty house all night long is absolutely horrifying to think of compound it's, that yeah but the fact that it's a murder house and the suicide the suicides have happened in that house but it, even if there are people living there and you start hearing screams from the house that people getting keep keep getting murdered at you know that's concerning but it's even more concerning arguably if nobody's in the house in a paranormal sense that's horrifying yeah yeah, yeah i guess I, both situations would be horrifying i assume i guess the the disembodied screams may be less horrifying. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what horrifies you, I suppose. Yeah. But this house also has the shadows that can be seen walking when walking by the windows when nobody's home. Uh, they, you got the classic woman in white, which I don't know. That could be La Llorona, right? She hangs out in that area. It's true. And then you get the blood that drips from the walls, which is... Yeah, that I want to see. That I want to see. Right. But but it's not uncommon in hauntings, where, as we're finding out. It sounds like when I first heard it, I think the first haunting that I really heard about, especially the, or when it comes to this show, the first one that we covered where I heard that the walls were bleeding was in Edinburgh with the poltergeist of Greyfair's churchyard. And they said that in the mausoleum, uh, during a ghost tour, a bunch of people saw the walls bleeding. And I was like, that sounds super far-fetched. But I don't want to discount it. But now especially with a lot of these poltergeist cases, we were getting cases of, you get a lot of like the green slime, black slime, and then you also had red slime, not just theories, but documented proof of it as well, where they're photographing it and sending it in to get analyzed. This is a thing that happens in hauntings and you see it more and more as you dig deeper into these cases. So when even something as far out as, as saying like, oh yeah, the house is, the walls are bleeding. Like it just sounds like, sounds like something out of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. But when you see it all over the place in different countries, all over the world, there's going to be something to it. Yeah, but I, but also when it's said nowadays, please give me some some sort of visual evidence, right? I understand not getting it for me if it was like the 1940s. You're like, hold on, blood, I got to crank this camera up and get a photo of it so that everyone will believe me, right? Like, but in 2024, if you're telling me the walls are bleeding, I would like you know, an iPhone, a selfie, you know, throw the peace sign up, like just chilling here with this bleeding wall. Hashtag. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've seen footage of it. We've seen pictures of it in a few 
locations, but that's definitely something you're going to take out your phone if you see it. Um, you know, like in, in person, obviously you want to get some footage of any, anything you see like that. Uh, Brent says that um, Charles Burlitt's World of Strange or something like that cites an account from a police precinct in Georgia and tested it as human blood, apparently. Yeah. It, at one of the poltergeist cases that we covered relatively recently, they went out and they had that whatever substance was bleeding from the walls and you know, like, like amassing inside of their cabinets. They went out and got it tested and it was it tested as partial, you know, partially as human blood. So very uh very weird who's that's blood is that yeah that's real evidence that's tangible that's mm -hmm. that's like crime scene <laughs> crime exactly. scene evidence it doesn't get better than that so yeah actually it's a good question i wonder if they could have tested it and got the dna but i mean i guess if you don't have something to test it against you can't find that out unless it's in the database but who knows true um the other weird thing about this house the house of the black clover is the fountain that is out front with the kids holding a skull. So at, at yeah, face can value, we, can we talk about this nonsense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that image was not an image of the statue. I, for whatever reason, was unable to find an image of the statue. So I, AI generated it, but it's, that's basically the gist of it. There's four, four kids on that are part of the statue or the fountain. And they are, one of them is holding a skull and they believe and it's a legend. You can obviously test that the skull is not a human skull. It's a, it's part of the statue, but it was the the lore is they believed it was the skull of one of the right. kids that died there. Obviously, it's not. Could be. Weird. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's gonna. I I don't care where you are. I don't think that's gonna fly in too many places. If we're just like, what do we do with this dead body? Let's just throw the head on the on the fountain statue. I mean, obviously, that's where that belongs. Well, also, what year? What year was it from? This was eighteen uh, hundreds, mid eighteen hundreds. That seems a little late for that, maybe. Well, also you you could. But you, you go to go to go go to Paris and look at some of the churches. You have complete churches decorated with not just like skeletons, but like they make chandeliers out of human bones and everything. I would not rule it out as something that could. Not have the happened. orphans. Not the yeah. orphans. My 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 point isn't that it's it's impossible that that could have been something that happened. My point is, if you wanted to know if it was a human skull, you could find that out fairly easily. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and I believe that the legend is just that it's a legend. Otherwise they would say it's confirmed. Mm. That is how that works. But that's the house of the black clover. I want to move on to the main focus of this episode, which was the Belen cemetery, because there's so much, there's so much that haunts this cemetery, including a big one that I left out that I want to talk about now. So do you want to do the, it's a vampire. Do you want to talk about the vampire now? Or do you want to talk yeah. about the other stuff? All right. I was shocked it wasn't in the episode. I was looking up some pictures to create the little intro video there. And I just said, vampire, vampire, vampire. I'm like, wow, this is going to be sick. Yeah, let's yeah. hear about it. Yeah, well, it's not a ghost. So I left it out of the, the video, but I still want to talk about it because it's a vampire and vampires are, are cool again. So oh, Dave, uh, Dave just finished the Twilight series. He's all pumped up right now. <laughs> He's all jazzed up. <laughs> You, you like, missed it earlier in the pre-show. He had no shirt on. He put sparkles all his glitter all over his chest. Just, just twinkle his, his he actually has Edward written in blood on his chest right now. He's Team Edward. In yep. Sparkly blood, of course. <laughs> yeah. Team Edward. All right. You're not, so you're not a monster. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so the Belen Cemetery, formerly known as the is not in front of me. Formerly known the cemetery as good. the because, Santa, yeah, yeah, because your connection would be even worse. Is my connection bad? No, no you're I'm good. Just in general, you just cursed it. Thanks, Rob. Oh. Yeah. Uh, formerly known as the Santa Paula Cemetery, that's what it was known at the time of this situation. So, mid 1800s in the Barranquitas neighborhood, uh, citizens recounted an ongoing string of deaths occurring only at night, and it was happening to children and small animals. And initially, it appeared that the deaths were from natural causes, so nobody thought anything of it. Child death rate back in the 1800s was very high because they didn't know you had to clean your tools after doing surgery and things like that. Fun fact, they didn't learn that fact until like the mid-1800s. So infant mortality rate, very high. Um, so they didn't think anything of it. Weeks went on and the phenomenon persisted. So they launched an investigation and they found after doing autopsies and things like that, that there were consistent puncture holes in the victims and that the victims were drained completely of blood. So now 
it took the investigation to uncover this. So I'm going to assume that they didn't really do a lot of autopsies and they just found um, dead people and said, up oh, dead, bury them. They wouldn't check to see if all the blood was missing, apparently. Seems kind of Have we rushed. ruled up porcupines? Um, I don't do think it. porcupines drain their I victims of blood. <laughs> no, no, no. I think we've ruled them out. <laughs> immediately actually i i think they were i think that was the first thing checked off was could porcupines have done this no it, it was not porcupine related continue oh, well glad we got that out of the way is it okay if we just you know rule some things out here as a team could it have been a rare breed of mexican vampire porcupines <laughs> <laughs> now instant now extinct <laughs> This week on Hometown Ghost Stories Cryptids. <laughs> We're back at it again, folks. Hey, Chupacabra, look at that. Look at that. People have theories. Look at this. I'm not that crazy. Chupacabra. All right. I like yep. it. It is, like it. you know, some rumor that there's a kind of porcupine. All right. Moving on. So shortly after they discovered that the bodies are being drained of blood, the same tragedy began to happen to adults, too. So now not just children. Uh, it was happening to adults and children, newborns. Mothers were finding their babies in cribs. They're finding their loved ones just dead and drained of blood. So panic ensues at this point, and the town folk basically just remained indoors at after dark. So the town was pretty much quiet at night now, and people just at this point deemed it to be a vampire. They decided that this is the only plausible. They probably didn't know about the porcupine theory, so they. <laughs> They, they deemed it a vampire, and a group of vigilantes assembled and set out to find the perpetrator. I assume they had torches and pitchforks and whatnot. Now, here's where the story varies and breaks off into three different possibilities. There's three different stories that are three different possibilities of the way the story ends as legends go. So number one, and we'll rate them and we'll think which one we think is the most likely. So number one was the mob rounded up the suspects, singling out a ghostly looking man. He was pale white and most resembled a vampire. So they drove a stake through his heart and killed him. See, you got to make sure you check all the... <laughs> all the boxes. Not great. I don't think I'm on board <laughs> with story number one. Version number two, the mob entered homes of individuals and just looking to see if there was a, a vampire in one of the homes. And they singled, nope, sorry. And they located one man who was asleep in his bed and they drove a stake through his heart. Okay, well, he was sleeping. Was he sleeping <laughs> like this? He must have been sleeping upside down or something. I was just going to say. <laughs> he was like, break into the first house and find a sleeping man. <laughs> was it during the day, maybe? <laughs> this poor guy was just trying to take a nap. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he works in night shift. Or I do hope they at least the first guy looked like a vampire. This is much worse. <laughs> you, what do you mean? What do you mean this man's sleeping? In his own house. Yeah. No, not good. Not good. So I'm not on board with one. I'm definitely not on board with two. Number three is where I was where I put all my chips. So a mob set a trap and they ensnared a, a demonic looking creature. They dragged the beast to the Santa Paula Cemetery and with a long stake pierced its heart, leaving the monster to perish where it fell. The following morning, the corpse was covered with thick concrete plate and buried uh, in his place. Well, what was the trap? Was it they went into his bedroom and made his bed all nice and cozy looking? And like, oh, we'll, we'll catch him now. <laughs> Poor guy goes to bed. They're like, we got another one. <laughs> they said ensnared. So I assume there was a rope involved. I, I picture one of those like Looney Tunes lassoes on the ground. You step on it and like pulls you up into a tree. Just a box with a Around stick your... holding it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think ensnared means, well, I think it just means trapped, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they trapped him. Who knows? Maybe a bear trap. Maybe a bear trap. Yeah, I, I hope that's... not, because he probably wasn't the vampire, and that's an even worse way to go. <laughs> well, they said if if the story is true, it was a demonic looking monster. It must have been pretty obvious that it was a vampire. Or so, or go back to chupacabra, right? Yeah, maybe it was a chupacabra. Mm. Did you ever see the story? Like the lady, she like hit what looked like a chupacabra with her. She just hit with a car by accident. And then they had it like tested and they're like, yeah, it's some like wolf something hybrid, but like they, they didn't have an answer for what kind of species it was that she hit and they got it taxidermied and everything. You can look it up. Like it's actually a pretty cool story. Like, Oh, she caught the cryptid. That's she hit it with her car. Yeah. <laughs> what if, what a, a lackluster ending for the, for the chupacabra, if that's how it went out. 
Right. Well, I'm sure there's more than one or there was. I don't know. Mm, maybe. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Again, anyways, we're, we're not good at cryptids, but here we <laughs> are. Famously, we don't make the rules. <laughs> I actually have no idea if there's only one chupacabra or many chupacabra. I have no clue. But uh, so months later, the stake that pierced the vampire's heart began to sprout roots, and it grew into a tree. This tree is now fenced in, which I can pull up a picture of it. Maybe. All right. So this is the third story. So the first one is we have. A man just looked like a ghostly vampire. They just staked him right on the spot. The second one, they break into a man's house, stake him while he's sleeping. Poor bastard. Mm -hmm. And number three is a cryptid slash chupacabra slash crazy creature that they bear trapped down by the train tracks and decided to bury him where it stayed by a... And now there's a tree there this tree that we're looking at now that is yes terrifying so, looking. looks like it eight is. trees in one it's crazy look at the root system on it and the story is so the story is this the stake that went through the vampire's heart grew into a system of roots and the roots kind of crept throughout the whole cemetery and entangled all the other bodies that are buried in the cemetery and the people believe the legend is that the vampire is waiting to raise his army of the dead and take its revenge on guadalajara which Ooh. is the coolest legend I've ever heard in my life. That actually is really cool. Mm -hmm. But look at the tree. Like the, like the root system uh, comes all the way up to the branches. It's, it's the weird, one of the weirdest looking trees. How would you even cut that thing down? Like where you do don't, you start? Oh, don't rob. You, you don't cut it down because the other part of the legend is that if you cut the tree, the tree will bleed. And if you break off a branch, it will gush blood and stain your hands red. Prove it. I can't. Let's, let, let's go down there. No, 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 no. We've oh, talked about this. We don't do this to graveyards <laughs> or don't. anywhere. You don't want. Yeah, I don't think. I think you definitely don't want to desecrate the grave of a vampire. That's yeah. Just just in case, it's a bad idea. Uh, here, before I get off this subject, is maybe we'll do it for dark mysteries. But here is the image of the uh, taxidermied chupacabra that oh. she believes that she caught. So we'll, we'll jump more into that because I, I think that actually could be a fun. They, they settled on wolf. That didn't look like a wolf. <laughs> Are we talking about the tree? Is that a wolf? High yes, Jesse, the tree. No, a wolf. <laughs> hybrid. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it was said it was a hybrid, so it was like a hairless cat wolf. No, so, I don't think it was wolf. I think it was a uh, part coyote and part like dog or something. I just don't know if that's how breeding works, but you know, we're not experts. We don't make the rules. Mm. But uh, Tess asked what kind of tree it was. It is a vampire tree. <laughs> That's all I know. I have no idea what kind of tree it is. So Coy on, Coyote man. tree it was actually the name of it. It's Coyote tree. That's right. Uh, so let's let's talk about some of the other people that are or some of the other hauntings at this cemetery because they're pretty they're pretty unique. We got a ghost pirate, and um, I was so happy to find a ghost pirate because I absolutely love covering ghost pirates. And this one's pretty good. He doesn't he doesn't like haunt the cemetery. So the legend is he was a pirate. He quit being a pirate. He basically cashed out and lived it with his riches until he died, which is like ideal, right? You go be a pirate for your whole life and you just cash out early and you just spend the rest of your life in the tropical paradise spending all your money. So that's what yeah, he that's did. Pretty, pretty much not the ending for most of the uh, glorified pirates that you read about. No, so. definitely not. And the uh, this guy, so he didn't actually get to spend all of his fortune. They believe his fortune is still buried somewhere in Guadalajara. People have been looking for it. But That's a new wrinkle on a pirate story. Oh, the buried treasure? Yes. Yes. Here we go. Pirate ads. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, the legend is if you go to his grave with the rosary, he'll appear and he'll tell you where the treasure is. But people have been trying and he hasn't been he hasn't been good about keeping his promise on that one. Which is fine. Yeah, because he's going to tell us. He's going to tell us when we when go to When we go to Guadalajara, first we have to learn how to spell it. Did you know there's five A's? Is that the scariest part of this entire episode? Is that there's five A's with one word? That's a lot. You counted them. I did. It was a tough one. Oh. Actually, it was a lot of fun to spell. I'm not going to lie. Like the first time I typed it, I'm like, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it really. It's, you almost can do it with one hand, I think. Or as mm. Dave likes to pronounce it, Guadalajara. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Uh, oh, fun fact about Belen Cemetery. There are members of the Jose Cuervo family buried there. Jose Cuervo. Jose <laughs> Cuervo. <laughs> Damn it. That is a fun fact. Yeah, they're, they're known for tequila and mariachis. I'm like, this sounds like the most fun of all time. It does. It sounds like an absolute blast. Actually, when we went to San Antonio, there was a lot of tequila and mariachis on that trip. There were. I they were expensive. That was an expensive uh, hobby, but I couldn't stop. Them. I remember continue, continue to have, like, don't stop. Just play all of the songs that you know five times. Yeah. And it was like, yes, that'll be $9,000. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. no, it, it, yeah. it was 20 bucks a song. It was like a strip club. <laughs> 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 but more fun. Anyways, the uh, so the other hauntings there, <laughs> the other hauntings there was that of Victoria Hurtado. And this one is disturbing so she had catalepsy which is an actual medical condition where you have seizures and you can go stiff and you, you people can mistake you for dead now nice. yeah scary scary situation for sure but you know you trust that your family knows when you're having a seizure so you trust that they're going to not bury you alive so unfortunately for victoria she had this she had amassed this fortune and her greedy shitbag kids were like we would like that fortune now, I think. So they waited for her to have a seizure and they buried her alive, which is not a good thing to do. I don't recommend it. That's and, another, uh, yeah, another one of those, don't do that. Definitely. Situations. But def terrible story, awful kids, horrifying way to go. And I just love that she didn't even have him in the will. I know. <laughs> That's like, it's not a good ending. But it's as good as it's going to get with the scenario that they were in towards the end of that story. It's just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You you couldn't write a better story than that. That's that's perfect. You could, you could. It, it ends with them not actually killing their mom. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Maybe she survives. That would have been good. This yeah, this shit. This actually ended pretty horribly. To be fair, <laughs> one of the worst stories I've ever heard. Actually, <laughs> no, actually really, <laughs> really dark. Yeah, she attempted to claw her way out of her coffin yeah, it was and was so heartwarming for dave <laughs> <laughs> just just loved it so much i hope they at least checked that she was actually dead when they opened it and they're like oh no she had a heart attack and she wasn't just having another seizure what if she's still alive today <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i don't think i don't think she is so let's hope not, not. neither did they dave that's the point neither did yeah. they not yeah. as jart warming as we thought it was. Hmm. I said that you couldn't write a better ending to the story, and I actually think I just did. But um, that would be pretty awful. So her haunting is pretty scary. That the, she roams the graveyard, wailing, and leaves ominous hand, bloody handprints on gravestones, and they disappear, which very is creepy. very creepy. So that's Victoria, and then the main story of the night is the poor kid who was scared to death. This is a really sad story. This was a kid. He actually existed, Ignacio, uh, and he his grave is there. You can go to it. People leave the toys on the grave, and the grave actually is as the legend goes because this story reads like a legend, right? Mm -hmm. But he actually is buried above the ground. On his, his tomb is on pillars, and they did that because he was afraid of the dark, and they wanted him to not be afraid of the dark because this is an, a, a unique phenomenon, right? We cover a lot of unique hauntings, we cover a lot of strange graves. And this one is up there with one of the strangest graves I've seen. Definitely one of the most unique hauntings that I can think of. He died and they keep burying him and then finding his coffin on top of the undisturbed earth. It's very Never strange. seen anything like it. No. It actually ties in well because we're going to be doing another Strange Graves episode. So this leads into that quite well. It does. It's quite the segue. But uh, scary situation to have a boy who's 10. There's different uh, different variations, whether it was 10 or 5. I've seen both. But I think his birth is on the actual stone, which has him at 10 years old. So uh, to be scared to death, right? You know, kids get scared. Kids can be dramatic and emotional but you don't often hear about a kid being scared to death. And this also could be a situation where it's the late 1800s. He could have died of quote, the sickness. They don't know how to diagnose everything because obviously medicine was what it was at the time. So who knows of the actual right. cause. Right, so he could have had a different condition that they, they didn't know what it was. Right. And being scared maybe uh, got that going. That That's such a sad story. Such a horrifying, horrifying story. It is, but his, uh, his grave site is, um, it almost seems like a positive energy, you know, 
Right. You know, and it's just, they keep the story going, you know, it's like, it's, there's so many graves at every grave site that just they're abandoned. You know, they don't, they don't get shown the love and you have a story like this and it's just, at least people are still visiting. They're still bringing toys and it's, just, it's a nice thing to do. It's obviously got a scary story tied to it, a tragic story, but you know, anytime you see a grave that's getting that much love at a cemetery, it, you know, this, it, this far separated from his death, it's, mm-hmm. um, it's a nice thing. Yeah, absolutely. But that's Guadalajara. There are several other haunted locations. I left this open for a possible part two in the future. They got there's the House of Cows, the House of Dogs, all sorts of crazy hauntings that are still uncovered by us. So we'll be back to Guadalajara for sure. Yeah, whatever the House of Cows is, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds awesome. How, how do you leave us on the edge of our seats for that one? Yeah, yeah. you want a two-hour episode, maybe? <laughs> While we were coming back, we could have done a special two-hour episode. Yeah, we would have. With Jesse on no sleep for 26 hours, it would have been really good for him. That's good. You just you just interrupted me three times. I tried to make a a steak joke with driving steaks through hearts for the House of Cows, and I'm so glad you did because it was not going to be a good joke. (laughs) (laughs) So you saved the episode once again, Robert. That's what I do. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Do we want to get into? Speaking of our episodes being great, do we want to get into some five star reviews? Yeah, yes. let's get the, let's get let's get into our final five star reviews. <laughs> <laughs> this first one is from AJD, uh, titled "One of the Best Podcasts I Have Found." I found you all's podcast about a month ago, and it's quickly become one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. I listen to it while working and doing house stuff. I've gotten some strange look from randomly laughing because you guys are hilarious. I enjoy the setup of the podcast, the banter. Uh, I'm working on catching up so I can join a live show. Great job, gentlemen! So thank you, AJD. This one is from Poon Police. <laughs> so, oh, all right. <laughs> nice. uh, Title Great Podcast. My buddy turned me on to you guys. I'm 65 episodes in and loving it. Keep up the good work. And the next one is from TCP. Great show, informative, and I'm going to guess funny is the last word, but Apple doesn't let us read the long titles. Get ready to belly laugh with these guys. Their episodes, pure gold, engaging, full of really cool, spooky locations and information. They're entertaining and filling with enough humor to keep you chuckling for days. Honestly, I'd give it I'd give it a, fo- a solid five stars. Definitely one of my favorite podcasts for ghost stories. And if you can't listen, they are also on YouTube. All in all, they are pretty amazing storytellers. And this one is from A. Wiles titled, It's All Right, dot, dot, dot. Just kidding. They are pretty awesome. I'm currently in episode 67, and Rob said they are pretty generous with the, with the stickers. We shall see. We haven't given away stickers in a while, but I don't even know if we have any right now either. This I found thing. a I found a hidden batch that slipped oh, through nice. the uh, last convention that we did. So, but yeah. I want to save some for spooky yes. season. But we'll do we'll do more giveaways. We're going to get another batch from once again. Um, RIP of the week, which is the uh, Mom and Pops <laughs> W. And. Um, the last five-star review is from somebody titled Just One More Episode, which is a great name. Titled Basically Perfect, the hosts are great, and the content is well-researched and presented. Definitely five stars. My new favorite podcast to listen to while farming and working. Keep it up, you guys. Cool. And there's some more. We're catching up from, you know, being, quote-unquote, off for two weeks. So there were some more in the emails and stuff, but we'll get through those in the next few weeks as well. Sounds for good. sure. Yes. Uh, we got a bunch of new uh, comments on Spotify. Uh, Rashad says, in reply to your critique on Ohio pizza, I recommend pizza, BOGO, in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. You're welcome. Awesome, jo- awesome job, guys. Huge fan. Oh, yeah, five stars. And then um, uh, Ela says, awesome episode as always. And you got my name right. Ten stars. Our first Ooh. ten star review. So appreciate oh, yeah. that. And, <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Bunch of other ones. I'll I'll go through those as well. I just wanted to pull them up real quick. Now that the Spotify website is actually working, but thank you guys so much. Keep dropping comments on Spotify again. If you're an audio listener, you can actually watch these videos on Spotify now. Cool new feature, and um, yeah, I think that'll uh, pretty much do anything else, Simon. That's gonna uh, maybe our Patreons member. Oh, yes, yes, we will do that as well. We we you guys got to let us work the kinks out the first show. We got to remember how we do things here. Yes, and uh, but while Jesse's pulling that up. Just a reminder, live show on the 18th in Weymouth, Massachusetts. 18th, what did I say? You just, you just said, said the 18th. 18th. 
pick a month we'll be yeah. live yeah well, we, just, we just show up on the 18th every month doesn't matter what day it is we just show up and we just start performing at barrel house d in weymouth and then the 25th and 26th we will be on block island doing investigations with people so hell yeah and that's that going to be something that uh We'll get you more information on that because the Block Island one is definitely something you're going to want to very much plan in advance. Tickets will be on sale for, for both events, but for Block Island, this one, that, uh, like I said, prepare for. Uh, let's jump into our VIPs for our patrons on VIPs, the Church of the Bucky McHat Elders. We have Tess, Dave D, Kate and Steve M, Blazori, Glitter Tees, Cameron from Washington, Kelly C, Jennifer P, Nick, Donnie N, Inspires Gaming, Allison V, Robert H, Dave Spanish is better than his geography. Uh, J9, Mallory K, Mom and Pops W, Lisa J, and Dude, Where's My Taco Filled Car? Well, uh, thank you so much for being VIPs. Next up, we have the Warren's Wards. Let's hop into those, starting off with Beth C. I want a math debate. You're welcome, Amanda H. We have Serena, Shawners, Apple Steph, Leslie F, Rachel G, Her Lady Spookship, Nefarious Chad Poles, Wahini Pirate, I am the Bridge Witch and I hate Rob, Julie Gooley, Eugene M, Arcade Hunters, Kath Q, hashtag t- Team Chuka. Team Chupacabra, the haunted cactus. All one word. That was tough. <laughs> Got the uh, DC, Chris Connolly, LBPS founder. Next, HGGS guest. The other, Rachel B, Sarah Cook, Zeta Chimera. We have Ambie Rose, Janice G, Lily, Rachel B, Seven Bones, Rob at the bottom of the well. Le- oh, boy. Dave, I should have you read this one. La Nina que atormenta tus pasadillas. Pasadillas. Nice. That's from Sydney. So Thanks, Sydney, speaks, Sydney, in her speaks. young years, speaks better Spanish than I do. I have no idea what I just said. God knows what I just said. Hopefully, I didn't offend anyone. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> also, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, Papa Squatch, um, I'm going to paint in cell haunted portraits. Steph A, Stan, the man with the ham hands and loving it. Thank you so much for being part of the Warren's Wards. Next up, let's hop into the Ghost Pirate Mafia, Mafia kicking it off with uh, Sherry P. Welcome in, Sherry. Uh, Shay, we have Trevor S. Thick boy Freddy allegedly lumbering around the Al Capone boarding school for harshly yeeted orphans and half skeeted spank bacon. Christina S. Uh, Kate C. <laughs> Chrissy. Kelly C. Ela D. Arg. Arg. I was, I was just checking chat real quick to see if I had any translations on that name, but I don't see anything yet, so we're safe. Uh, Crazy Legs, American Wear Potato in Texas. <laughs> A good twist. Thanks again for the uh, donations and the gifts again there, Potato. We have uh, the Red Beard. Hashtag the Revenge of Cake Dave. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I've been trying to forget about that ever since uh, we shot it. Sydney's translation is the little girl who haunts your nightmares in Spanish. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Very good. Um <laughs> We have uh, Just Call Me Bree, Miss Macabre, Headless Ghost Who Sees a 10-Minute Lashing Then Cries, Michelle Michelle, Nikoru, uh, I'm sorry, Naroku, Cold Warrior, Cornersburg Pizza, Cornersburg, Ohio, Best Pizza, and Wings in the Country. <laughs> what is this? The same person. Yeah, all right, all right, right. Whole you own the restaurant. No, no, this is patrons. What they say is fact. Well, we're, we're going to, we can't be promoting businesses on the Patreon. Page. I think they just, well, this is your own fault for trashing on Ohio pizza. Well, because it tell sucks. Us where the good spots are. It's not good. They're fucking making it up. Well, have you no- had Cornersburg pizza, Cornersburg, Ohio, which is the I best pizza so. and it's wings in Ohio. the country? They don't even know how to make sauce in Ohio. Like there's no way the pizza is good. <laughs> we have, I have come here to create witty Patreon names and subscribe to creators. And I'm all out of witty Patreon names. D from H town, Meta A. We have Sarah B. Dominica, uh, Oryx, the ta- tar- the Taken King. I don't know what that is. Uh, we have Monster Mom 04, Allie, Dark, Snark, McTibbles. Uh, what are we? Come on. I can't. I don't know how to say that. McTibbles, oh. hot day. Oh, did you get this down? I Googled it. I Googled translated it earlier because I'm like, I'm not putting this in if it means something horrible. And it, it means uh, how do I change my Patreon? No, it means I forget. What language is this? It's German, but I... I, Oh, is it German? It's innocuous. Don't worry. (laughs) Okay. Uh, McTibbles, thank you. I should feel like I should attempt it. It's Patreon. Mate hate jeden Patreon namen galesen wheel er kein fiegling ist. Oh, we called you a coward. Ah, you are a coward. All right. (laughs) That's what it was. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, We have Megan S. 
Sharon V, uh, Wayne C, Captain McTibbles of the Guadalajara Pirate Clan. Perfect. Crystal nice. Quinn, we still have good old Col Colby. That's Daddy great. Rob is the greatest thick boy. Freddy eats Jesse's farts. Alicia E, thick boy. Freddy allegedly attempting to yeet thick wife into a poorly dug grave while she is <laughs> taking a nap. Take that woman. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, Jalisco cabin ass with oozy blood walls. Um, <laughs> world traveling nuclear weather observer Jesse's useless boat dock. <laughs> <laughs> that, gets, uh, that gets my vote for the day. That's a good one. <laughs> we have Sam from Nepal. Joe might be a Yaoi R. Uh, Paul from St. Louis. Al Capone. I miss when the shows are all about me. Huggy Bear. Due diligence, due diligence, due diligence. And Solar Flare. <laughs> And then we have page two. I'm struggling today, guys. I've been slept like, like, like 26 hours. Uh, we're, we're having a tough one here. Mariah M, Kiralee J, Anthony T from the Notorious 603, Cody G, Brandon W, Hoopley Whoopley, Bridgewitch, the, and the uh, the Polkageist. Yes. So thank you guys so much there. for being on Patreon. $3 a month. You can listen to me stumble through your name. And uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. You, uh, you are absolutely amazing. Again, big shout out to everyone who donated. Eric, the Potato Guys. Um, who else did? Test P with a big 50. Zeta and uh, Apple Step became a member as well. So $1 a month to get you on YouTube. At least $3 a month to get you on Patreon. Unlock perks, ad-free episodes, early access, discounted stuff that might even include discounted tickets to our events if we could figure that out. So with that being said, let's sign off so I can get some sleep. Go to sleep, Jesse. We'll catch you guys later. <laughs> All right. Please. Goodbye. Thank you, guys.